Hello friends, this video on respiration in organisms part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. With this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us quickly look at some of the questions just to see if we got the lesson right or not. So question number one. Why does an athlete be breathe faster and deeper than usual after finishing the race? Now, I have mentioned this before also. Now, when an athlete has participated in a race, what is he supposed to do? He is actually supposed to run very fast and he is going to be over energetic. So that would need a lot of energy. So basically the energy demand of the body is increasing. Now, when the body needs more energy, more food needs to be oxidized because body needs energy. Energy comes from what? oxidation of food for oxidation of food what is needed oxygen correct so when the body has more energy demand so more oxygen has to be supplied to the body and how do you get more oxygen by breathing in air so when you want more oxygen you tend to breathe faster to get more oxygen so oxygen demand of the body increases and uh, faster and deeper breathing helps to get more oxygen into the body. So let's look at question number two. List the similarities and differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So the two types of respiration, both of them are respiration where food is oxidized to release energy. So both involves breakdown of food. However, in case of aerobic respiration, there is complete breakdown. But in anaerobic respiration, there is partial breakdown. So that would be a difference. But in both the cases, there is breakdown of food. Energy is released in both types of respiration. Whether it is aerobic respiration which happens inside our body all the time or it is anaerobic respiration which happens in our muscle cells during emergency. In both the processes, energy is released. If we talk about the differences in aerobic respiration, it happens in presence of air or oxygen. Anaerobic respiration doesn't need oxygen. In aerobic respiration, there is complete breakdown of food. So the products are carbon dioxide and water along with energy. But in anaerobic respiration, there is partial breakdown of food. So glucose gets converted to intermediate substances like alcohol or lactic acid. Question number three. Why do we often sneeze when we inhale a lot of dust laden hair, air? Now, whenever we breathe in, so first of all, the air has to pass through our nostrils. Now, the nostrils are also lined with the tiny cilia like structures, tiny hair like structures and all these try to block the foreign particles. But even then, when sometimes this dust enters the nose lining and irritates the nose lining, what happens is a signal is sent to our brain that a foreign particle has entered the nostrils. And then the brain immediately sends a message to throw. So now as soon as brain gets this message that a foreign particle is trying to irritate the nose lining and it is trying to enter inside our body, it immediately sends a signal to throw out that foreign particle. And that is why. So when the brain sends a signal to get rid of that dust, what happens? We breathe out very strongly. In fact, we deep, take a deep breath, breath and then we breathe out so strongly that the dust particles fly out of our nose. So in fact, that's what we do when we sneeze. When we sneeze, what are we doing? We are actually breathing out very strongly. So this causes us to sneeze when there is a lot of dust in the air. Question number four. Take three test tubes. Fill each with water, level, label them A, B and C. Keep a snail in test tube A, a water plant in test tube B and keep snail and plant both in test tube C. So here you have test tube A, B and C. So in test tube A we have the snail, test tube B we have a small water plant and in test tube C we have both snail and the water plant. So which test tube would have the highest concentration of carbon dioxide? So which one do you think will have uh, highest concentration of carbon dioxide? So let's try to see what will happen in each of these cases. 
Now in test tube A, snail is an organism which takes in oxygen for respiration and gives out carbon dioxide. So snail will be giving out carbon dioxide. So the concentration of carbon dioxide in this test tube will keep on increasing because there is nobody else to utilize this carbon dioxide and oxygen is anyways taken in by the snail. So that's what is happening here. In case of test tube B, you just have a plant and what do the plants do? Plants take in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, correct? So plants will be utilizing, so this plant will utilize carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. But animals do not perform photosynthesis, so they do not utilize carbon dioxide in any way. In the third test tube, that is test tube C, even though the snail will release carbon dioxide during respiration, but this carbon dioxide will be utilized by the plant for photosynthesis. So overall, in which of these test tubes, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the test tube will be more, that is test tube A. That's because there is nobody to utilize this carbon dioxide which is released by the snail. So, a will have highest concentration of carbon dioxide. Question number 5. Take the correct answer. In cockroaches, air enters the body through. Cockroach is an insect and in insect, what is the uh, respiratory system? They do not have lungs, they do not have gills. They do have spiracles because spiracles are like openings which are present at one end of the trachea. So it is just like our nostrils, like how we have nostrils which connect us to the lungs. Similarly, spiracles connect to the trachea of insects. During heavy exercise, we get cramps in the legs due to accumulation of what happens during heavy exercise? Lot of energy demand. To fulfill that energy demand, anaerobic respiration takes place in the muscles of legs. And as a result of anaerobic respiration, what is formed? Lactic acid. So due to concentration, increased concentration of lactic acid, we feel the cramps. During exhalation, that is while breathing out, what happens to our ribs? Now when we breathe out, we really do not need a lot of space in the thoracic cavity. So when we want to contract the thoracic cavity, the ribs need to move which side? The knee ribs need to move downwards. So we are right now talking about the ribs. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.